These are videos that one of our clients recorded and sent to us. It shows the damage that occurred when a recent heavy rain event happened. Unfortunately, they even had a drainage system in place which was supposed to prevent this. However, it was improperly installed. You can see here they have egress windows, which had been overwhelmed with water until the window actually broke, rushing water into their basement. This is a situation that nobody wants to be in. So in this video, we're going to be showing you exactly how we solved their problem, step by step, and the reasons we chose certain solutions for this situation. So on the other side of this egress window, you can see that there's a little bit of landscaping, and then it kind of goes into a very, very delicate swale here. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to make this swale much more noticeable and able to handle a lot more water to actually get the water away from the house. We do this by using specialized tooling. One of those tools is a laser level, and we set this on a certain percent of slope, which is the slope that we're looking for to achieve in our swale. And then we go through and we build the base of the swale to start our drainage system. Now we always start with some form of grading so that the yard drains or the surface drains that we install will be level with the bottom of the swale that we eventually create. Now something to note here, you can actually see in this video, we are ripping up some irrigation lines and we're also ripping up a couple fiber lines. Something we take pride in is being upfront and honest with our customers. We knew that we would have to hit these lines and so we told the customers that and they were able to schedule replacement fiber installation as soon as we were done with our project. This allowed as little downtime as possible. And to be honest, it's not too difficult of a conversation just to be upfront and say this is what we need to do, especially when the repercussions are water flowing into your basement through a window. But other than that, there were also some other areas around this home that had some water damage or water saturation problems. For example, there were some landscape beds next to this house, and what we did is install yard drains and very small French drains to be able to capture some of that water on top of the surface and that soaked into the soil and to be able to redirect it towards the street away from the house. Oh, something else worth mentioning, you see all of this busted up concrete and these rocks here? There actually was a patio here, and the problem was we couldn't create a drainage solution for these landscape beds effectively while this patio was here. Plus the customer actually didn't like the way that their patio was over here, so what they did is hired a different contractor to come in and bust up this patio, and then we were able to install our drainage solution before they re it. And something we did, we actually laid our four inch pipes inside of six inch pipes as a form of a sleeve underneath the concrete work so that the concrete will never have to be busted up again if we ever need to repair something on the other side of this landscape bed. So here's the area ready to be covered. You can see there is a yard drain there on the top right and it kind of goes into a left section which is actually a French drain which will absorb any water that's already saturated in the soil. And then on this section that's closer to the house here, you can actually see the left side is a downspout it's, that actually runs inside of the house. It goes from the roof inside of the house and then pops out here, and we're going to go ahead and bury it. And then the one on the right side is actually a gutter downspout, you can see that, and we're going to go ahead and bury that too, so that this water will actually discharge towards the street, and not right next to their landscaping bed. Alright, so back to the side of the house, we've actually dug a trench under the swale. You can see here there's actually three main pipes. The two six inch larger pipes that you see actually collect water from the buried downspouts that we mentioned, as well as the yard drains that are throughout the yard. There's a couple 12 inch and a couple 20 inch yard drains, and their purpose is to capture surface water that's on top of the ground. So during any really heavy rain event, uh, this will prevent any form of pooling. And then the pipe in the middle there that you see is actually a four inch perforated pipe that's meant to act as a French drain. So we're gonna be filling this trench up with gravel before we cover it, and that will create a lot of void so that any water in the area will hopefully find its way to this French drain. So here's the trench again, just with pipes covered with gravel. You can also see the very large 20 inch yard drain right here that will hopefully capture any water that would have otherwise went into their egress window. Once we finish filling this area with gravel, we'll then wrap the fabric filter over it. And this fabric filter acts as literally a filter to prevent debris and dirt from getting into the French drain pipe and clogging it up. We've done this for many years and we found the main problem that most people have in their French drain or their drainage systems is that they don't have the right amount of slope and that they didn't use a fabric filter when installing their French drain. All right, so I just wanna show you some of the piping that we have here. 
Uh, I guess the first thing I'll show you is this sump pump connection over here. This is actually an interior sump pump that pumps water out of the basement. You can see we've added a custom connection there that is actually called a sump pump freeze protection overflow. And so this is here if that any of these lines ever freeze, the sump pump can still function effectively and pump water out of the house without pumping it into a pipe that's been frozen and maybe clogged with ice. Moving on, we've got these atrium yard grates here. Um, and there's a special reason that we're using atrium covers for these. Uh, Caleb's gonna explain that in a minute. But you can see that this actually turns into a Y where one half is a French drain and the other half is the pipe leaving the atrium drain. And we've actually got a total of 50 feet of French drain between the original swale and the house to absorb any water that is in this area. You can also see we're getting ready to hook up the other buried downspout lines that come from these interior downspout drains. And just as a reminder, we've got three of these atrium grates that we're putting here for the landscaping purposes. Here's a quick tip. Whenever you're installing these yard drains or surface drains or catch basins, you have to make sure that they're perfectly level and that there is a hole or a few holes drilled at the bottom of them. The purpose of this hole is to drain out any excess water that isn't able to go through the pipe. This prevents things like mosquitoes from growing in them. Overall, this was around a five day project. It included a lot of connection, a lot of pipe, and a lot of groundwork. Overall, this customer was really happy with how we treated their yard, the solution we provided, and even left a five-star Google review. Being in Leewood, Kansas around mid-October, it was actually perfect weather for this project as well. Anyways, I'm gonna hand over the rest of this video to Caleb, who is a lot more knowledgeable on the drainage engineering side of things. Caleb here with High Flow Drainage Solutions. This drainage system installation project is now complete. And I want to go ahead and walk you through that and show you what that looks like, as well as point out a few things, a few details along the way. But this area had a concrete patio. First off, the client didn't like the design of the concrete patio. But secondly, we have downspouts and we had landscape beds behind the concrete patio that needed to be drained properly. And there was no way to get those downspout drains or the or the landscape bed drainage systems installed without removing the concrete. So that's this mess you see right here. The concrete contractor removed the concrete and we'll be installing a new patio here shortly. Now I mentioned those landscape beds. Uh, in this spot in front of this window and a bit of an L shape in front of this window and leading into the quarter, these areas were landscape beds behind the concrete patio. Uh, there was no drainage infrastructure, no, no type of drainage inside these beds. So what happened, you have concrete, an area of dirt, and then house, water that fell in these areas and got trapped, and it was actually causing water to get into their basement in this quarter. Over here, we were getting a lot of water in the bed for sure, but thankfully no water leaks. You still don't want to, just because the water isn't getting into your basement, it doesn't mean you want to leave it untamed. It's still hard on the foundation walls. When soil gets wet, it expands and it pushes. And you wouldn't believe how much force that soil has when it expands and pushes. Starting here at the corner of the awning, we have French strain and a surface drain built into that French drain, but with a separate six inch discharge line. And by the way, inside this main trench of the drainage system, there's also a third pipe that is exclusively for the downspout drains, the basement sump pump drain, and the behind berm drainage system, which we'll talk about here in a second. But we have three discharge lines inside the main trench of the system, and three daylighted pipes at the end of the drainage system. We cut a swale down the side of this home, which opened up a whole lot of water flow. We also built a berm up on the left-hand side of the swale, a berm between the swale and the home to eliminate any risk of flood water crossing over towards the home and running into the window wells. And as I'm sure you saw earlier in the video, this client had water cascading into their basement through these two window wells due to all the flood water that was flowing through the backyard untamed. 
Now, speaking of the berm, whenever you create a berm like we have in this instance to cut flood water off from the area you're trying to protect, you have a bit of a problem created by the berm. Uh, you have now trapped water in between the, the structure you're protecting and the berm. So you always need to go ahead and plan on installing a second drainage system behind your berm area. And in this case, we installed about 50 feet of French drain down alongside the berm. And inside that French drain, we have a separate 4-inch discharge line feeding each of these 12-inch catch basins. We have a total of three 12-inch catch basins. I want to take a minute and talk about our choice of grates for the three 12-inch catch basins behind the berm. This grate is called an atrium grate, and the reason we used atrium grates is because this area behind the berm is going to be a landscape bed, and more than likely they're going to use mulch. Wood mulch has a tendency to float when there's a lot of water in the area, and it'll float. And it wants to, if, if you have a flat catch basin grate, that mulch has a tend, tendency to float over your flat grate, and then the suction from the water flowing down through the lid pulls the mulch over the grate, and then you end up with a plugged grate. If you have an atrium grate that's domed like this, the shape of it deflects debris. It keeps debris from completely plugging up your 12-inch or whatever catch basin you have. As I've been walking around the home here, you've probably seen a couple spots with black pipes sticking up out of the ground. And what these are for, they are sleeves for an irrigation contractor who will be coming in in the future to install new irrigation zones for our client. If we hadn't sleeved the fresh drain and thought ahead, the irrigation contractor would end up having to cut or tear up the drainage system we installed for you, which is completely unnecessary and avoidable if you just install a couple sleeves in several different locations so the irrigation contractor can get across the drainage system without cutting into it. This is the discharge location of the drainage system. And in this case, because of how much water we were dealing with, we went ahead and opted for the daylighting method, which we've showed you in some earlier videos. All these pipes are ran out on a consistent slope until they came out onto the ground out by the street. There are critter guards inside these pipes to make sure that creatures don't crawl up inside your drainage system and make it their home. Uh, if you want critters living on your property, there's a, there, are, there, there will be cheaper methods for housing them than letting them crawl up inside your $20,000, $30,000 drainage system and destroying it. Now, because of how much water we will have moving out of these pipes. And mind you, because there's no pop-up of better, the water isn't being slowed down and dispersed across the ground. It's just shooting out of here with a, an extreme amount of force and velocity. Uh, we went ahead and installed a decorative stone bed, or you could say dry creek bed, in front of the discharge end of these pipes and leading down to the street. This drainage solution implements four layers of defense. I want to go ahead and list off each of those layers of defense, and then we'll go back and talk about each of them in detail. So, for listing off our layers of defense, we first have a surface drain system, in this case, two 20-inch catch basins. Second layer of defense is the swale that we excavated through the property around the back and out to the front. The third layer of defense is a French drain. And the fourth layer of defense is this berm in combination with a drainage system behind the berm. So as for detail, let's go ahead and start with the surface drain system. We have, in this case, two 20-inch catch basins and they are attached to a separate 
six inch discharge line. So just to be clear, these two 20 inch catch basins have their own discharge line. Now, those surface drains, they're going to be able to move a tremendous amount of water. That being said, we're up against a tremendous amount of water entering this property. And we know that during a really heavy rain event, more than likely these surface drains are going to become overwhelmed. And if you ask the question, Caleb, why don't you install a surface drain system that is able to handle all the water thrown at it? Well, the answer is sometimes we do take that approach, but more often than not, we are working in residential properties and using a really large pipe, uh, you have to discharge that pipe to daylight. And let's say the pipe is 12 inches in diameter. There's no way to discharge that pipe in a discreet and certainly not aesthetically pleasing manner. So it's, it just becomes impractical to install a surface drain system any larger than one that has a couple 20 inch catch basins and a singular six inch discharge line. Now as for the second layer of defense, we have a swell and this swell starts in the back over by the patio area and it goes around the side of the home and empties out in the front yard. The point of the swale is to move the excess bulk water that the surface drains can't handle during a really heavy rain event. And in this case, I, I don't know if you can really see elevation well in the video here, but I'll try my best to describe this, what it looks like. Uh, the, the swale down along the side of the home, which is the one that will see the most water, it is, it's sitting about a foot and a half below the top of the berm and it is about 10 feet wide uh, this erosion blanket is eight feet wide for reference and that swale is going to be able to move a tremendous amount of water they're great at moving bulk water the problem with swales is that a lot of the water traveling through the swale will go subsurface you're going to lose some water out of the bottom of the swell. Not all, not all of the water moving through the swell, or not all the water that enters the swell, is going to make it safely down to the end of the swell, safely away from the home. So if you rely upon a swell only, you lose water into the subsurface, and that water has nowhere to go but down towards your foundation. So what we do is we make another place for that water that goes subsurface to go. And that is our third layer of defense, French drain. So we have a French drain that starts at the top end of the swell over by the back patio, and it runs down through the center of the swell. In this case, that French drain is about 24 inches wide. Any water that goes subsurface through the bottom of the swell is going to hit that 24 inch wide French drain. And the French drain has its own separate discharge line all the way down to the end of the system so separate from the surface drain system separate from the downspout drains and the basement sump pump drain so we know that that french drain is always going to be functioning during the heaviest sovereign events that french drain will be functioning now the fourth layer of defense is the berm along the side of the home now the berm is there to keep water from crossing over towards the home through the swale. It allowed us to get some more depth in our swale. Now, berms, they do create a bit of a problem if you're using them to cut off a home from floodwaters. And that problem is water gets trapped behind the berm. So we always go ahead and install a drainage system behind the berm, which I talked about earlier, but I'll go ahead and say it again. It's a, a 50 foot long French drain with three 12 inch catch basins. Now that is way, way more than adequate to handle the amount of water that falls behind the berm locally. The reason we sized the system so large is that it provides us with a layer of defense for any water, which we doubt this will ever happen, but just in case, if a little bit of water comes over the top of the berm, we have a really substantial surface drain system and french drain behind this berm now 
What we did to make sure that the drainage system behind the berm isn't affected by the surface drain system becoming overwhelmed, it is tied into the downspout drain system of the home. So this main trench, it has three discharge lawns, three main lawns, one for the surface drains, a separate one for the French drain, and a third discharge line for the downspout drains and the behind berm drainage system. So those are our four layers of defense. And this strategy is one that we often implement. It's a great way to take care of a massive amount of stormwater on a property in an aesthetically and discreet manner. So those are the four layers of defense that we implemented to solve the drainage issues in this case. Now the first three strategies that I mentioned, the first three layers of defense, the surface drains, the swale, and the French drain, those three together you will see us use pretty often. In extreme cases, a berm may be called for. Now that is pretty much a wrap for this project as far as our scope of the work goes. The, once the concrete guys get done with re-pouring the concrete patio in the back, we will be coming back after them to go ahead and finish installing seed and erosion blanket over the yard areas. We didn't want to put down seed and erosion blanket right before the concrete contractors come in because they'll be bringing in concrete buggies and probably, probably a skid steer, which when they drive on that and especially turn around, they were going to rip up all the erosion blanket. That wouldn't make any sense. That would just end up costing our client more money. So we went ahead and opted for making this project a bit of a two-stage project so we could do things in a proper order. There's a right time for everything. Now, if you are in the Kansas City area and you are looking for a drainage contractor that can install and design a comprehensive drainage solution that will eradicate your drainage issues, We'd love to help. Please give us a call. And thanks to all the viewers for watching.